Hello, welcome to Totally Random. Okay, so got a package here from uh, Mr. Paul Spriggett. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it all arrived well. Um, I've just covered a few things up here. So this is a really interesting bit of relic of the past. Um, I've already opened it up and had a peek, so I'll just get into it. But before I do that, the history on this is, sort of dates back to the uh, 1800s. Um, when people used to do ones and twos in the uh, main street. Um, locks and pay toilets were introduced, and uh, yeah, certain people could and couldn't afford to go to the loo, things like that. Um, so often these things were heavily vandalised and there was attendance that you could pay money to. Uh, so here, without further ado, is a piece of Australiana. Uh, not from the 1800s, obviously, but from the 1970s, I believe. So, about town. We've got fitting hardware here. A nameplate that goes with the lock. Another lock, which will come to the janitor's lock. So, I'll try and lay this out in somewhat order so it makes sense. So, it's rather large. So, what do we have? 370 or 15 inches approximately and 100 mil across so yeah 4 inches wide uh, so she's quite substantial it's hard to get in shot let's pause it for a second and try and get a yeah, I'll just lay it sideways so that gives you any idea so there's two lever locks, and yeah, that'll, that's yeah, the best I can manage for the moment. Uh, I'll obviously be doing a fair bit of work on this. Um, it's vague, it has a vacant sign obviously, so up the top here, let me turn it around. A slot for the uh, coinage. This took a decimal currency two cent piece, uh, which would be collected from the bottom here, I would imagine. Uh, so you'd put your money, get in shot, you put your money in the top, slide that, and the door would be locked. You could go do your business, and I'll wrap this hardware, and then, you know, I'll let yourself out, obviously. Ah, very cool. Thank you, sir. That is super fucking cool. Nice little abloid rim cylinder. And I've already got an idea for what I may do with that. An idea, hell, in secret, I've already started working on it. Okay, so that would go like that, I would imagine. Uh, okay, or maybe not. The door has to be able to close. It depends. I'm yet to have a really detailed look. But yeah, that's some of the fitting hardware. For the catch mechanism. <coughs> Part on. Well, we okay, so we got it. Oi. Don't need to lose that. So, as you can see, it's rather large. And obviously a handle to get... Let yourself back out. One thing I found interesting, having a look over this, get it right up here where you can see it, is that, I'm not sure, and tell me if I'm right, Paul, 
whether that's a spring because it looks a lot like a bobby pin. And I know these things weren't, people didn't treat them so nice. So, um, I don't know, to know that you could replace the spring with uh, a bobby pin, that's really clever. Um, so, yeah. And you can see what I mean when it's had a little bit of violence in its life. It was either pushed the door the wrong way or something like that. But that's nothing to be worried about. I think this is really cool. And kind of fucking funny in a way too. So, But yeah, there was a huge debate about paid toilets. Whether they should be a thing or not. As there are debates over many things. So what else we got in here? And below blanks, which may or may not go with this lock. However, I have had a I have had a look, and as I've never played with this keyword before, yeah, just a bit too big to fit. And yeah, it's not the exact same, okay, but that is in the original Ablo key. So, all in good time, I'll have a bit of fun with that. In any case, if I come across another Ablo, I've got blanks. So. Cheers. Now, this is the fun part. Oh, I love impressioning, so you need to, obviously that key's a bit too tall at the back still. Uh, I'm going to impression the lock for this so we are able to operate it. And if I'm correct, where did I? Yeah, I've lost it. If I'm correct in thinking, these are the same blanks. Oh, out of focus. I'll just have to take a fair bit of material off that because, according to the digis. This is 11, or we'll make sure, yeah, I'll zero it out. Eleven point six three or point, yeah, four eight. And this guy. Is 18, so it just may mean taking material off the bottom and the front that's not hard to do with a file so it's a bastard cut and I think they're a bit shit really this particular heart brand file uh, the blade is supposed to be able to lock and unlock but if you look down there closely it doesn't matter which position it's in whether it's fully to the left, it'll come out. In the middle, it'll come out. And full hard to the right, it still comes out, or left, whichever. And then the southern hemisphere, so maybe everything's upside down. Okay. Wait. Can't be losing blanks. So that's cool. That goes up there. And this is the really cool part of it all. Trying to keep track of everything here. Actually, well, I like the way that looks, but it'll fall out. So, let's 
get that out of the way again. Another piece of the fitting hardware for the door. I may mount this actually on a door, but or stationary, so I can uh, play with it. But I think it'd be more, more interesting if I put it on a door somewhere in the house, even on the dunny. Being a dunny lock, be comical. And this, this is really really cool. We have here. Australian decimal currency two cent piece uh, left circulation in 1991 came into circulation in on the 14th of February 1966 so this one was minted in 1989 so Got a few of these, and they would ultimately end up I'm out of shot again. So, what would happen is you'd come along. I'm not going to be so foolish as to drop that in there, but you'd drop that coin down the slot, bolt to the side, lock, do your business, and if for whatever reason someone crawled out underneath the stall or whatever <clears throat> whatever myriad of silly things or logical reasons there's a key so that it can be unlocked you know someone may have gone to sleep in there um, hiding from someone who knows you know what you can come up with a million silly analogies anyway that's where the money goes in that's where the money's collected. So, the challenge for me, which I'm going to enjoy, is uh, impressioning these two locks. So, thank you very much, Paul. That's really, that's cool. And this is, as you said, this is a classic piece of Australia. I'm sorry I can't get a better shot of it, really. It's just so fucking big. Um... Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get this thing working so we can see the mechanics of it. And the big car, it's five, the package was 5.2 kilo, so yeah, the box doesn't weigh much. Um, it would be fitting hardware, so I reckon there's a good 4.5 kilo in this. I haven't actually weighed it. So, don't know what's hiding under there yet. Mm, yet to play with it, so other than um, have a quick look at it. Um, yeah. Very cool, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'll even give it a bit of a polish up to get it looking spick and span. All right. Um, that's been the... Uh, oh, hang on. I've forgotten something. It even came, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, I did try and find a link to these guys, however it led me to another locksmith company and I wasn't sure about it, so this was manufactured by J Hubble Proprietary Limited in Melbourne, and yeah, to gain admission, insert two cent coin into the slot and draw the knob back. So yeah. yeah I want to make a nice thumbnail. Um, that's really interesting. I love contraptions, you know, so this is cool. Very cool. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, totally random locks and picks. Um, keep illegal and have picking, of course. <laughs> Have a nice day. Cheers, guys.